Um, this kind of goes specifically to um, um, the kind of the place of the university in all of this. Um, and uh, I've recently uh, been rereading uh, Chris Hedges' book, The Death of the Liberal Class. And, um, and you know, he's, he is, I'm sure you know, you know this, uh, he's he a really scathing critique of kind of liberal institutions and talking about the, the, the kind of complete sell out to kind of corporate interest and the hollowing out of any possibility of this um, dedication to the teaching of critical thinking, critical analysis um, that might serve the kind of long term movements. Um, and uh, then he also talks about how you know they stood by uh, and it actually held silence some of the more kind of radical critics within this. Um, given that, um, and you see students that are now fairly active in this Occupy movement. Um, you see uh, attempts to kind of move back into kind of the university. Um, how do you see the university in all of this? Uh, is there even the possibility that this institution can still contribute um, um, in the ways that kind of Chris Hedges is critiquing, like uh, contribute to actually building the kind of critical analysis and long-term um, sense of struggle? Um, or are we too far gone at this point? I, I mean, this is a real creed de curve, you know, this part. And, well, I think it's a great book. He's a terrific guy. I like him very much. But I think this is overstated. In fact, you know, there's a kind of a sense of a past golden age lingering there. And there never was a past golden age. In fact, if you go back uh, 50 years, I think the universities were a lot worse than they are now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, effect of the 1960s on the university was, was significant. Uh, people, uh, not only, you know, uh, uh, people came out of that atmosphere who were committed to critical analysis, activism, and change. And the country's changed enormously, and the universities with it. So it just, take my own university as an illustration, but it's across the country. So I'm at MIT, so of science engineering at the university of the world. But when I got there in the 1950s, uh, it was white, male, uh, conservative, well-dressed. You wore a jacket and a tie all the time, even if you visited your friends on Sunday. Uh, that meant deferential uh, obedience. You do your work, you don't ask any questions. But that was the atmosphere. There was nothing going on. Uh, take a look walk down the halls today. It's half women, third minorities, casual dress, kind of like rude dress, uh, which means informal relations. That means uh, questioning. Uh, issues such as central issues at a place like MIT, like what's the role of technology in society? Nobody asked those questions in the 50s and the 60s. Uh, you, 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 your job is to do your work and you remember the Tom Lehrer song about Werner von Braun. Mm -hmm. I don't care where the missiles come down. That was, mm -hmm. that was essentially the attitude. He was satirizing. He, he was there. You know, he was satirizing something that was quite real. Uh, it, by around 1970, that was changing. Uh, in fact, there was even an, under student pressure, uh, the, the institute actually got to the point of calling off a whole day uh, just to deal with questions of science technology, what are they for, what should we try to do, what kind of society we want. That would have been unheard, inconceivable five years earlier. Mm -hmm. And it left a permanent stamp. And now issues like that are alive. There's a lot of activism, uh, not, you know, the Occupy movement, you know, but uh, things going on all the time. We walk down the walls with the souls, you know, for every imaginable mm -hmm. purpose. People, people are interested in things. And it's just changed enormously. Mm -hmm. And I think the, you don't expect the universities to be radical institutions. Sure. They're conservative institutions, and they're going to stay like that. But they do have openings, and I think the openings are a lot wider than they were. Actually, you know, my own experience is kind of a little unusual, but it's not untypical. In the 1960s, uh, during the Vietnam War, uh, there were, but, but at, at the early stages, there was the protest was just crushed. I mean, we couldn't even have public demonstrations in Boston until 67. Then. 
because hmm. uh, he broke it out of file, I believe, by students, incidentally. By students. Yeah, and, and then it changed. But, uh, but there was also the beginnings of the resistance movement, not just protests, but uh, craft resistance, deserters, uh, uh, tax resistance, uh, a whole set of what are called illegal activities. Uh, the center, the academic center of that was actually a lab where I was working at MIT, which was 100% funded by the three armed services. Uh, that's the kind of an indication of the kind of opportunity that is available in universities which have, you know, there is a tradition of free inquiry. It's not observed, you know, mm -hmm. plenty of deficiencies, but it's there, you know, can't deny that it's there. And it can it come out and flourish uh, at, uh, if people have the will and dedication. Uh, and I think that's true all over. You know, I'm sure it's true here. Yes, absolutely. You know, but, uh, uh, so, yeah, Chris is correct. They are conservative institutions that want to support power overwhelmingly. They're not going to ask questions. But uh, within them, there are opportunities to do things. In fact, they're the freest institutions in the country. So I think they have a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, it's really good to see this kind of, uh, I think, take hold. And uh, there's several different initiatives right now that are taking hold on colleges, campus to kind of really build some of the particular, some of the things that we're planning on here. We just launched our own little Occupy Kutztown thing where we're talking about little things like, okay, starting with the concrete developments, like let's look at banks. Where is the bank? University banks at Wells Fargo. Right. Let's get that money out of Wells Fargo. Let's get in community-based banks. Let's get in credit unions and move on. Um, with, under the whole idea, so the government's not going to help us. State's not going to help us. We have to do it for ourselves. Yeah. So you can fact, say as an institution. Even get down to more concrete things than that. Like a, a lot of the really effective organizing in the country has begun with things like uh, getting a traffic light on a street where kids have to cross the street. You know, it doesn't sound like much, but if the community can get together to get that, they get the sense that we can do something. If we work together, we can achieve something. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. But these are not trivial things. Mm -hmm. And that's the way organizing has to take place wherever, wherever it is. Now, that's what the Occupy movement ought to be doing at this point, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting developments, I don't know where it'll go, was the Occupy the Hood movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they could, you know, we're like in some, in Boston, happy to be downtown Boston, who are mostly black community in Roxbury. Well, you know, if that, it didn't, but if it could have linked up, and maybe it still can, to the main Occupy movement off the financial center, that would be a step forward. Now, they have different concerns and interests. You know, they have local, very real local concerns and interests, which are significant. But the people who are talking about, uh, you know, getting rid of too big to fail banks and getting money out of politics and other big things, if they can also get involved in the actual day-to-day -day problems of people who are facing hard lives, it's mutual and interactive, and they can learn a lot from it, and uh, they can bring other people along. I think that's the kind of thing that has to be done. Well, I don't want to hold you up too much longer. I appreciate so much you taking the time out. Um, I know you've got an incredibly busy schedule, so I um, just wish you uh, a happy Thanksgiving and uh, yeah, you. Just with the family and everything else. So <laughs> take care, and I hope you enjoyed your stay here at Kutztown.